Well, good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you. Uh, thank you for coming this morning. Uh, my name is Ben Glasgow, and I'm a uh, owner here at Crosswind, and we also have a small group at our home uh, and a home group leader. So um, anyway, that's, that's who I am. But I just wanted to welcome you and tell you uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for all those that came. And we want to welcome the folks that are watching online uh, and, and welcome you to our service as well. Uh, would like to uh, give a special welcome to you guests that are with us. And uh, tell you just thank you for coming. And uh, we have a welcome center out front. If you would stop by there, please, and get yourself something on the way out to get a little goodie bag for you. Uh, but thank you for coming. Uh, if any guests are watching online, thank you for watching as well and joining us. Um, we do have a kids ministry here. Go down the uh, Orange Hall if you would like to take your children to uh, uh, meet Jesus on their level. And uh, we have trained volunteers back there that would love to uh, teach your children about Jesus if you would take them back there as well. We always remind you to pick them up afterwards, uh, and that would be for fifth grade and younger, okay? Um, anyway, uh, also the mom room that, that we have is available for some of you mothers that may want to uh, be with your child uh, during the service uh, and not miss much at all. Uh, it's back here to my right, uh, your left, if you would like to uh, give your child some special attention during the service. Uh, after the service is over, if you would like to uh, uh, meet, talk, pray with any of our uh, staff here, uh, we have um, our starting point room that's over here to my left in the very back of, uh, of the auditorium here, uh, and we would love to pray with you, uh, answer any questions that you may have, and our staff would be there to love on you if you have anything after the service. Um, giving, in, in regards to giving, if you would like to give today, uh, we have several ways that we do that. You can give uh, traditionally here uh, with our wooden boxes in the back as you head out the back door there. Uh, you can give uh, on the app, uh, which is uh, our Crosswind Church app. You can also give online on our website if you would like to do that. Um, I want to encourage everybody, speaking of the app, if you would like to get the app, please, uh, please put that on your phone. It is free. Okay? All you do is have to search I am Crosswind. And uh, wherever you download your apps, and uh, you can see additional announcements there and sign up for anything such as water baptism, our ownership course, mission trips, etc. There's a lot of things on, on our app, and we would just encourage you to go there. I have it on my phone, and uh, it's pretty cool stuff there. Uh, we are offering a grief share course. Uh, it will start September 7th at 6 p.m. here. Um, it is a group setting to where... Uh, if you've gone through some grief, death of a loved one, and you would like to, to work through that in a group setting, uh, it's, a, it's a really, really good uh, place to come do that. Uh, and once again, that's called a grief share course. If you would like to do that, you can sign up on the app today. So we would encourage you to do that if you would like to do that. Uh, special day today, we are taking communion. So um, uh, I want you to know that that is open, which means that uh, any of you can partake we do just ask that you are a follower of Jesus if you do that. Uh, for those of you watching online, uh, we would like to give you ample time to prepare as well. So we are taking communion today. Uh, so anyway, uh, would you join us in worship? Good morning. Cause I believe there is no doubt Cause I have seen your faithfulness My fortress over and over I have no guitar, Mr. John I have a hope Your name 
I have the strength in your grace, your faithfulness, my fortress, all over and over. Walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for, shut the Release your love Unleash your power For all to see The Spirit come Fall on earth Over and over Make way through the waters Walk me through the fire To where you are famous for what you are famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring drop bones to life And do what you are famous for What you are famous for I believe in you I believe in you I believe in you Your words unstoppable, all things are possible in you. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask of me, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible. guys for singing along with us. You can take a seat. Isn't change fun? Yeah, man. It'll mess with all church people. Like, it just put every single one of y'all on nerves that we just didn't sing three songs. And that's weird, isn't it? That's so weird, right? Like, I get it. Like, I grew up in church, too. It's weird. It's okay. We'll embrace it together. If you're online and you're just like, you're thinking about leaving, like, wait. 
don't leave yet. Like, hang on, wait with us. It is good to be here this morning. I am so excited. I love change, so I'm excited to be here this morning. Excited to see all of you guys here in the room. I know Ben's already done this, but I love to welcome all, both of you guys, those of you online as well. Uh, but especially if you're a guest here today, like, this church is weird. Like, it's okay. It's so good to be here. It's so good to have you guys. If you're a guest here this morning, uh, I want to say welcome. Don't freak out just yet. It's okay. We're going to embrace all of this together this morning. My name is Garrett, and I'm simply one of the pastors here on staff. And so excited to have all of you guys here because we get to start a brand new series here at Crossman Church. And it is always an exciting day for me to start a brand new topic, a uh, brand new conversation on something that is literally one of my favorite things to talk about, the church. Uh, and to be more uh, specific, to be really completely transparent and absolutely biased, uh, Crosswind Church. I love all things Crosswind Church. And so uh, the reason that I wanted to do this, especially this time of year. So for, for many of you who, who, who really don't understand how the kind of the calendar works, what we see uh, in the church world during the summer is like everybody just goes on vacations and out of towns and there's rest and all this kind of stuff. And so like church people and attendance is kind of like doing this number, right? And so, but for statistically for us here at Crosswind Church, we see a lot of guests and we, saw, we see a lot of new visiting families come in the summer. I don't really know why. It's just, that's just kind of happened. We've kind of tracked that the last couple of years. And so what we thought about doing is, uh, especially as we've kind of entered the, the, the school your rhythm and things were kind of more, I mean, I know life's hectic, but they were kind of a little bit more steady in pace of life, especially for those of you with kids, grandkids, things like that. And so I thought about, like, I know for those of you who kind of came in the summer, like, you can probably tell me, or you might be able to list a couple of the different fruit of the spirits uh, that we talked about. Uh, but you may not know all things Crosswind Church and, and what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. And you might know a little bit about investing, because we've been talking about that for the last couple weeks, but you don't know yet uh, all things Crosswind Church. And so what a fun way to kind of dive into the fall, a fun way to kind of dive in um, into, uh, just a heads up, the Be Rich season that's coming up here in a few weeks, uh, uh, other than talking about all things uh, Crosswind Church. And so uh, for those of you who are guests today, again, if you're new to Crosswind Church, or maybe you've been here uh, for the last couple weeks, or maybe just started this year, or you don't really know why you're here, but like, I'm just glad you're here because you're going to get to learn, if you hang out today and the rest of the next couple weeks, um, about some things that we do here at Crosswind Church, and I think uh, that you're going to have a good time and understanding what all that we do. So for those of you um, who are new to church, right, like this may be your first time at church for a long time, uh, that's, that's one group of people. There's some group of people here that you, you're like me and you grew up in church and you probably know the what of all churches, right? Like the reason churches exist, the reason why we gather on Sundays, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, whenever it is churches gather, right? The what is real simple, to make disciples. It's that simple. Matthew, one of Jesus' original disciples, recorded the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, we get it in verse 19. For those of you who grew up in church, you know this as the Great Commission, right? Jesus says, the last thing Jesus says, right? There's a timeline. Jesus dies. Jesus rises from the dead Easter Sunday. We have the first Easter Sunday. Everybody celebrates because the resurrection changed everything. And then Luke, one of the other gospel writers, tells us that Jesus spent 40 days, an additional 40 days past the resurrection, showing himself to his disciples, teaching the disciples, bringing back some things that he said, back to memory, refreshing that, that, uh, some things that he said. And then right before he ascends into heaven, he gives this last command to go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the what of all churches. I don't care what denomination, I don't care any other title, it doesn't matter. That's the what of every single church, including the one that you're sitting in today or you're watching on. That's the what. It is our goal as Jesus followers, as a community of Jesus followers, to make other disciples. Now, where it changes is in the how. How we do this is a little different. Right? This is the vision, this is the strategy, this is the purpose behind each and individual specific church. And it looks different for every church, and that's wonderful and that's fine. Our how is real simple. We, we put it into three words. We put it into three words, worship, community, and service. That's our how. That's how we're going to figure out how to make disciples in these three different aspects. So just as a quick guideline, just as a quick reference for you want to know what we're going to talk about in the next couple weeks, including today, Worship, community, and service. That's why we messed up the whole worship set. We're going to mess with it a little bit more, all right? Now, here's the kicker. Here's the thing that we talk about all the time, and it's our why. 
The why behind why we exist. The why because we open the doors and we have kids programs, we have student programs, we have groups, we serve in the community, we serve the church. The why behind it all, we put it on t-shirts, we put it on the back wall, we put it everywhere, is that life with Jesus is better. Let me say it again, because y'all, everybody here, every owner across the church says, say amen right there, and you missed it. Way to go. You missed it. All right. So here's our why, okay? You ready? Our why is, is simply this. Life with Jesus is better. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're here this morning. All right. So life with Jesus is better. It is so much better. Now, let me explain this. I read a book um, a couple years ago, a guy by the name of Simon Sinek, he actually wrote a book entitled Start With Why. And within that book, he says that before folks, before people buy into your what, they have to buy into your why. So if that's true, if that logic, if that statement's true, or if you begin to think along that frame of thinking, before we can go out and reach disciples, people need to understand why it is that we exist. Crosswind Church, owners, regular attenders, those of you who consider yourself a part of Crosswind Church, the reason we exist is because we adamantly believe beyond a shadow of a doubt or by any kind of situation, circumstance, or crisis that goes on in your life, in our community, and in our world is simply this. Life with Jesus is better. Okay, all right, just making sure. I was was worried y'all weren't there, okay? Seriously, life with Jesus is better. And Simon goes on in the book and he says that That the why behind any organization, we can even put this in the church world, the why behind Crosswind Church is simply a belief. We believe that life with Jesus is better. And so the hows, the worship community service aspect of it, are simply the, the actions that we back up our why. We worship here today. We showed up, we carved time out of our Sunday morning to show up and worship Jesus because life with him is better. And we're involved in community, whether that's home groups, whether that's a Bible study, whether that's family. We're involved in community because, again, life with Jesus is better. We serve the church. We serve our community. We serve others because life with Jesus is better. Those actions back up our why. Those actions, the how of Crosswind Church, backs up our why because life with Jesus is better. And he goes on to say that the what simply proves your why. And so if we show up in worship, we show up in community, we show up and serve, the result is our what? The result is other folks coming to know Christ. The result is making disciples. And so you can probably already tell, I'm really, really excited about this series. I'm not going to ask you to say amen a third time, but you could have if you wanted to. Now, The reason I love this is because if we were to take this frame of thinking and understand how is it that we're going to uh, prove to others, how is it that we're going to show others that either show up to church or the people that we are going to meet this week or we're going to, a family that we're going to hang out with next weekend, how is it that we're going to prove that life with Jesus is better? The first thing is we're going to talk about today and we've already messed with this morning is worship. Now, before we get into that, let me back up and say this, because anytime we talk about life with Jesus is better, um, I, have to, I have to instruct folks, or we have to instruct folks, whether that's from stage or whether it's out and about in the community, you need to understand, when we say life with Jesus is better, we are not saying that he's going to make you healthy, wealthy, wise, and beautiful. That is not what God is saying. We don't believe that, okay? Uh, one of my favorite books of all time is Irresistible by Andy Stanley, who's an author and a pastor out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. In the beginning of his book, he talks about, he mentions that he recently had read a New Testament scholar left the faith and embraced atheism because of pain and suffering in the world. Now think about that for a second. A New Testament scholar, someone that studies the New Testament, the Gospels, Jesus, the life of Jesus, the, the, his disciples, the disciples' life, the writings of Paul, all of these things that, we, that make up the New Testament. A New Testament scholar left the faith and embraced atheism, the belief that there is no God, there is no divine being that we call God, because there's pain and suffering in the world. The reason that is so messed up is because our God promised pain and suffering. Andy would go on to quote, he said, the, the, the reason behind pain and suffering, the reason why that does not prove, that does not disprove the existence of God is because our God promised it. John, another one of Jesus' original followers, records Jesus' words in John 15 when he says, Jesus says, if they persecute me, they're going to persecute you. 
He goes on in the next chapter, and I quote this verse at least once a month from on the stage because it's so powerful and so true. John 16, 33, we all need to see this because it's plain, it's simple, and it's blunt. And for those of you who are Jesus followers that are dealing, you're having a problem with tension and pain and, and suffering in the world, and you don't really know about faith and how that works and how can God love me and all this kind of stuff. This is what Jesus said in regards to this. In this world, you will have trouble. How does it get any more clearer than that? In this world, you will have trouble, period. Take it to the bank, guaranteed. They persecute me, they're going to persecute you. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, this is where we can get start. We can get talking about worship at this point. Because no matter what comes in our life, what we believe at Crosswind Church, that if life with Jesus is better, no matter what happens, no matter what situation, no matter what pandemic, no matter what epidemic, no matter who's elected, who's not elected, no matter what happens in your life, bankruptcy, death, divorce, cancers, no matter what happens, life with Jesus is better, period. Now we can get talking about worship. Because in worship, in the church world, when we get talking about worship, we get thinking songs, right? Right? We get thinking songs, and we get thinking environments. And this is what I love about Crosswind Church, too, because we'll tell you this. If you come to an ownership course, we'll tell you this. Crosswind Church seeks to create an environment of worship so that you can express your love of God. And that's a great environment to be in. Like, there's just something happens when there's two, I don't know, 200 some people. I don't know how many people's here. Like, there's just something that happens when people gather and gather in the name of Jesus and sing and lift up his name and clap and worship and do all the things that we do. There's just something about this environment. But oftentimes, I've got to remind church people that it's not about the environment. Because you can go, look, y'all, this is one big metal building in a field. This is not the greatest environment ever, right? Like, this, it's a great environment, but, like, it's, it's nothing fancy. It's not about the environment. You can go to brick-and-mortar churches. You can go to portable churches, mobile churches. You can come to metal building churches in a field. Like, it's not about this environment. But we're going to do everything within our power to create an environment that no matter who you are or what life of, or walk of life you come from or whatever your background is, that you can encounter the resurrected Jesus on a Sunday morning. And we use all kinds of things, don't we? We use a multimedia presentation, right? Like we have these awesome screens. I love them because I never, I'm the worst with lyrics. I'm terrible at lyrics. I love these screens. We use these screens and projectors. We use lights, colored lights, sometimes no lights, right? We use all kinds of things. Microphones, technology. There's technology. Y'all behind that thing right there, there's so much technology. Like I'm so ignorant to that. Like it is amazing. I'm literally being broadcast to the world. Like that is ridiculous, crazy. But that's what we do to create an environment of worship. And many times we get so focused on the environment. Well, it's too loud in here. They didn't sing my song. I like that one song. They didn't sing it. They've been singing it for three weeks and they didn't sing it that fourth week. Look, y'all, we ne- you never know what's going to be up in here, okay? Look, last week we sang five songs. The week before we sang three songs. This week we sang one, one song, and, get, and I got up here and got talking, right? Like, you just don't know. Again, it's not about the environment. It's not about the songs. It's not about the style. It's not about the, it's about you coming into a, an environment where you can express your love of God. That's what worship is. And if you would come into an environment and focus in on Jesus for just 20 to 30 minutes. i just crazy enough to believe that the, the entire perspective, the entire outcome of your upcoming week could totally change. If you would just at the minimum commit 20 to 25 minutes on a Sunday morning to worship and to focus on God, your Father, and what all Jesus has done for you, it could change your entire perspective. But oftentimes... Our week is so jam-packed full of stuff. We just love worship at church because it's just a breather. And for some of you parents, we get to be away from our kids. Yes, right? Like, it's just, go to cross me kids, right? Like, give me some breath. Like, and so we don't even get to focus on Jesus because we're just, we finally came to a moment where we just get to rest. And we get to sit in chairs and it's so nice. And I understand all of that. I understand schedules. I get that. But what would it look like, church people, Jesus followers, what would it look like instead of taking a breath and thinking about what tomorrow brings and how there's a situation coming this week 
or next week or next month that I've got to deal with. And finally, when you have a moment where it feels like, <sighs> I get to breathe. And I get to have a moment by myself. I know there's words on screens and the musicians and people are singing and some people are clapping. Some people don't know how to clap. And some people got hands raised and all that kind of stuff, right? What would it look like instead of focusing on the circumstances of what's going to happen or what's about to happen or what maybe what did happen? What would it look like to focus on Jesus for just a few minutes? Because some of us, we've got it on T-shirts and we've got it on stickers and, and marketing stuff about life with Jesus is better. And it's simply that. It's a statement. It's not a belief. And for those of you who consider yourself a part of Crossman Church, I'm here to encourage you this morning, to remind you this morning that it is better. And the how to prove to those around you, to prove to yourself that you believe that, to prove to others, you've carved out time on a Sunday morning to show up to church. And my question for some of us, if we had have done two or three or more songs in worship, would you have worshipped? Would you have stood there looking at words on the screen? Would you have sipped the rest of your coffee? Let's be real this morning. The worship part of a morning service, the worship part of Crosswind Church's Sunday service, it is literally the only time of the service, it is the, literally the only part of the worship service where you get to bring something to God. That's it. Now for some of you old school, like, well, I bring my tithe. Good. I'm so thankful for that. I'm glad. But that's a form of worship too. We don't talk about that a whole lot, but giving, whether it's tithing or offering, whatever you want to call it, whether it's a portion of your income, a portion of your paycheck, that's a form of worship. And just because we don't, we don't partake of that in our worship service doesn't mean it's any less of worship. That's a form of worship too. But I'm talking about when songs, when the church body stands up, sits down, raises hands, claps, whatever it is, that is the point of the service. That is the section where you get to say, God, I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care what happened yesterday. I know something's going to happen to me tomorrow. But in this moment, in this time, in 2021, I don't care what's happening. I'm going to worship you. And I don't care what the rest of everybody else does. I don't care what they're doing online. I'm going to worship you. Worship is expressing to God how much he's worth to you. And so again, let me ask it this way. If we were to have a normal church service and we were to sing three or four or five songs, would you have worshiped this morning? That's a tough question. Because we're people of habit. We're creatures of habit. Like, we just get in this rhythm, right? We show up to church. Someone stands up here and talks about things. It's really for the guests, so I don't have to listen. There might be an announcement or two. And then they get singing. We stand up. We might sit down. We may clap. We may raise our hands. We may sing. We may sit there. We may drink coffee. We pray, amen, video, speaker. We get in this routine, don't we? And so this morning, in order just to mess with all things church people, confuse you and change things up, let's, let's really talk about worship and what that looks like. Maybe if we talk about it, maybe if we brought the tension in the room, maybe if we were to sing a couple songs at the end of service, maybe it would mean more. Maybe. Perhaps. This morning we're taking uh, communion. And I know Ben's already told you, but... Open communion at Crosswind simply means if you're a follower of Jesus, we would love for you to partake with us. If you're not a follower of Jesus, I'm going to ask you to wait. Uh, wait until you make that decision. Wait until you're ready to follow Jesus. Because when we take communion, we are uh, doing this in memory of what Jesus Christ did for us. It is a form of worship. And, and what's, what's funny, we talk about this a lot on, on our staff, and really, uh, for those of you who are, have uh, been a part of our ownership course, like we'll tell you what we're not really good at at Crosswind Church. Uh, and, and scheduling communion is one of them. Uh, and we just kind of forget to go about doing our things. And so as we were talking about this very first week in worship and what that looks like, well, since Jesus performed this ceremony right before he was betrayed, right before he went to the cross. This is, this is combined. This has brought unity to the church for thousands of years. And so if you don't know the story, the last week of Jesus' earthly life, 
He's come into Jerusalem. We know this is Palm Sunday. He goes about and does a couple things through in the temple, outside. Eventually, we get to Thursday. Thursday night, they're celebrating a Jewish festival of Passover. And um, Jesus does something different this year. He takes the bread... He takes the bread and he breaks it. He prays over it. He thanks it. And he tells his disciples. He said, this, this bread represents my body, which is going to be broken for you. It's going to be broken for us. And so today, as we begin to focus on Jesus. This morning, as we begin to focus on our own worship of Jesus, could we remember what he did for us? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you loved us so much that you sent your son to die for us. And Jesus, this morning, I ask you to forgive me, to forgive us, for not worshiping you, for getting in a routine, for getting in an unhealthy rhythm of just going through the motions. And God, today, this morning, with this communion element, Father, I thank you that you sent Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for going to the cross, being broken for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat. I don't really think the disciples understood what was going on in this moment. Again, maybe those 40 days after Jesus is resurrected, this makes a little bit more sense. But when you go and you find this story in the Gospels, when you go and find this story that Paul recounts to the letter of the Corinthians, Jesus, he takes the cup, this cup of wine, and he says, this is my blood which represents a brand new covenant. And it sounds weird, right? Especially if you're an outsider, you, don't, you didn't grow up in church. Like, you don't, what? Blood? I don't understand that. Well, from the Old Testament ways, they would sacrifice an animal for the atonement and for the forgiveness of sins. It's been widely stated that without the shedding of blood, there was no sacrifice. And so Jesus, hours before he's betrayed and handed over to die, he takes a cup and he says, y'all, this is the blood of the new covenant. My blood will be shed for your sins, for all of humanity's sins. Heavenly Father, again, we stop and we don't focus on tomorrow. We don't focus on what we're about to have for lunch. We stop in this moment and remember that your son bled for us. And Jesus, you died for us. And because of your death, and because of your resurrection, your blood washes away all sins. And God, you cast them as far as the east is from the west. It doesn't matter what we've done in our past because the blood of Jesus cleanses it all. And so Jesus, this morning we stop and we thank you and we remember. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's drink. Depending on what version of this story you read, Matthew actually says that they sang a hymn before they went out to the Mount of Olives, to the garden, until all that Jesus goes through happens. Today, I want to ask those of you who are followers of Jesus. Were you planning on worshiping this morning? Did you come to church expecting to worship? Forget about the environment that you're in. Because there are other followers of Jesus around the world today. 
Some of them are in hiding. Some of them are underground. Some of them will die today. And here we are in this beautiful building with all the multimedia, all the technology. And again, I ask the question, did you come to worship? Did you come to express your love for God? If you didn't, we're going to give you a chance. For the remainder part of the service, we're going to sing and we're going to worship. And that looks different for everybody. For some people, they'll stand. Some people will sit. Some people will sing. Some won't. Some will quietly pray. Some will lift hands and shout, all that kind of stuff. Again, don't focus on the environment. It's not about the environment. It's about your personal expression. Because if you'll worship and you'll express and if you'll do these things in an environment, you're showing everyone around you. You're showing to your family and friends that you're around. You'll show to the ones that you'll encounter this week that life with Jesus is better. And that'll motivate you to go to work. That'll motivate you to talk about Jesus. That'll motivate you to love your neighbor. That'll motivate you to do things that you may not have ever done before. And so my prayer for all of us this morning, regardless of what you're going through, what you're dealing with, what you're going to have to struggle with, in these few moments that we have this morning, would you focus all of your attention all of your strength, all of your effort on the God who loved you so much that his son Jesus died for you and came back so that you could be set free from the power and the devastation of all sin. Heavenly Father, I pray for every single person in the room, for the majority of us probably followers of you, for some maybe not, God, I pray we would lift up your name like we've never lifted up your name. May we not focus on Monday, Tuesday, September, October. May we focus on the name that is above every name. And Lord, your word says where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst. And Father, I hope you are in this place. Be here. Hear us. Show up in our lives. Hear our worship this morning. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, oh, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. God, we live for you. There is none beside you. And show me, fill me, holy. He's worthy. Worship you, Jesus, oh, Jesus, the name of
God in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
worship not just be on a Sunday morning. God, may our worship not just be songs that we sing. These words in and of themselves have no power. Or may our worship be sweat. 
sacrifice, relationship with you. Or that we would sing of your great name, that we would live for your great name, that we would build our lives around worshiping the King of Kings. Seal this in our hearts, God. Seal this in our hearts, Lord. We love you and we praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being here today. We hope to see you next week.